Sunday, October 1st, it's 2023. You're going to be a host tonight. I'm Dana. Hope you're having a good day and a good weekend. Somebody should. So since July the 13th, we've been covering tritium. Propaganda from the entire world's media, the entire planet's media, the entire planet's university, the entire planet academic of all disciplines have sat in silence. The official story as of July the 13th of this year is that this never happened. This is two of the four reactors that are have lost all their inventories and each reactor core is equal to about 100 Chernobyls. It was pure uranium, pure plutonium, much more volume. And at the top of the buildings were decades of reactor cores. Chir Chernobyl didn't have uh, fuel pools at the top of the building with reactor cores and the Japan's reactor cores have maybe five to six reactor cores in each fuel pool which is way beyond capacity. And the reason is, is because they don't have a repository in Japan, let alone anywhere else worldwide. And for 80 years, the world has been very complacent and allowed the nuclear industry to exterminate the species. And at the end of the line, the only species left is gonna be you. Do you really think that they're not hard at work? The Fisher story is only 2 grams, 2.2 grams of tritium got out of four buildings that have lost decades of reactor cores in each building. Chernobyl was just a reactor core. So what do you think decades of reactor cores in each building? Well, for instance, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags in 2019. They admitted to 105,000 storage sites and if there's farmland there, guess what they're doing? Right alongside of one ton bags of radiation. And the world doesn't see that's an issue. How, how the hell did we all get that stupid that we got ourselves in this big hole? The plumes covered the entire planet in 30 days and everybody's yelling about Trump. You have a absurd amount of nuclear pundits out pretending the building looks like that instead of what it looks like. And it, so it's called social engineering. It's not entirely everybody's fault. But it's hard to comprehend how the entire world's media has done this for 80 years and the world has still sat in silence. Well, that's because you got generations and generations of indoctrination. Now, I tell you, there's 30 million one-ton bags. There's 55 countries banned the food from 14 prefectures. And 30 million one-ton bags, a one-ton bag is all you can put in the back of a one-ton pickup truck. That's five rows of traffic around the entire planet. You, you haven't, you're not even at the nuclear power plant. You're just talking about the prefecture fallout. Some people say 60 million. There's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil. And the official story is one sixteenth of that kind in tritium is all that got out. The official story that came out on July the 13th, and this was a, a nuclear and quantum engineering professor in South Korea claiming the discharges from multiple nuclear meltdowns is equal to three grams of sugar, of sugar, of sugar. And so the world media has went and pretended, rather, that they were in Japan and in the Fukushima fuel pool because they're worried about three grams of sugar. The people in all of these prefectures and communities ran away because they're worried about three grams of sugar. And that the media and the universities sanctioned that story. The universities where you send your children to be nurtured 
are busy cutting everybody's throat. And that the official story that now has gone crazy worldwide is that 2.2 grams of tritium is all it got out of the buildings that no longer exist. But don't worry, it's in a thousand tanks and only 0 0.062 grams of that will be released each year for 30 plus years. So why did they decide to pretend this never even happened completely? Why are professors and medias worldwide vehemently out there denying you the ability to have a conversation? And why is the world silent in, in you know, the dis different disciplines in the academic communities? Why are they silent when these pictures were available within the first week? And anybody with a degree absolutely positively knows the reactor inventories are gone from the buildings that dwarfs all nuclear each of these buildings has more had more inventory than all nuclear accidents in history chernobyl three mile island santa susanna wind scale Mayak, when rolled up into one are still not equal to one of these buildings emissions but officially chernobyl which is a brand new reactor, mostly graphite is the world's worst accident. When these buildings, the reactor cores in each of these buildings is equal to around a, a hundred Chernobyls in uranium plutonium. And so we're gonna tell a lie, tell the biggest one you can think of apparently. And that's what your universities and medias have become, a weapon against your future and the future of the eight million species. And if you don't care for yourself, good for you. But at least, care about the eight million species. They didn't do nothing to you. And your loved ones can't have a future without them. The author is a professor of nuclear engineering. He's a professor. And what he talks about is something I've covered many times since September 11, or March 11, 2011, when Fukushima event happened. <clears throat> was that there was several thousand academics, universities, alumni, former academics, professors, the nuclear industry, all of them, by the way, they tell the story, in Taiwan and South Korea, that came out and put propaganda in all the comment sections of all the people that were trying to have a reasonable debate and destroyed the ability of anybody to have a rational conversation. <coughs> the students at the universities each day were going online and finding factual information and then loading the comment section up with propaganda. And it's still going on today. The site's dedicated to attacking me, not debunking me, because you can't find anybody out there trying to debunk me. All you can find is people attacking me. And the lies and the deceit and dishonesty and the attacks are nothing less than ruthless right from the inception. I'm still here 12 years later. I'm still telling you the truth. I'm still documenting the catastrophic event. And 12 years later, the world sits in silence. The Chernobyl never had fuel pools. The two red depictions at the top of the building are two fuel pools. They're at the top of all these boiling water reactors in particular. America has 70 of those attributes, or those types of reactors with those attributes. The building to your right, to your left, should have been razed right to the ground. There's nothing left. They, they kept it there so they could put a contraption over it and then pretend that they're in a building that no longer exists and everybody fell for it. And reactor four is interesting because we have the documentation of the explosion of reactor one and three. And there's reactor four. So how come we haven't got 
right? How come we haven't got a video or pictures of reactor four blowing up? How could you not? How could the cameras catch reactor one and reactor three blown up, but didn't catch reactor four? Because I can guarantee you they captured re reactor four. So they put these contraptions, and that's, that's all they are. They're not even functional. They're just meant to manipulate you into thinking that they're in the building. Because they're not going to show you that picture and say they're in the fuel pools. At the, the fuel pools are at the top of the building. Here's a picture you won't find. All four reactors, or all four sides of reactor four. But officially, according to Arnie Gunnison, it looks like the picture behind him, and according to the media worldwide, it looks like the picture to the right. So that's only two of the four reactors. And it dwarfs all nuclear axioms combines by maybe a thousand. By maybe a thousand. They're shipping a million, a billion pounds just out of Fukushima Prefecture. You're looking at 13 prefectures that were banned by 55 countries. The, the tanks were built to manipulate you because they're trying to make you believe everything's in the tanks. So, how do you pick, explain 30 million one ton bags? 30 million which is equal to five rows of traffic wrapped around the entire planet. And UN, of course, Eisenhower warned you about UN. If you look at the history of wars, here's how the world goes to war. Um, Patrick Clausen explains it. I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. And it's very hard for me to see how the United States uh, president can get us to war with Iran. Some people might think Mr. Wilson wanted to get us into World War I. You may recall he had to wait for the Lusitania episode. Some people might think that Mr. Johnson wanted to send troops to Vietnam. You may recall he had to wait for the Gulf of Tonkin episode. Uh, we didn't go to war with Spain until the USS, uh, yes. until the Maine exploded. And may I point out that Mr. Lincoln did not feel he could call out the Federal Army until Fort Sumter was attacked which is why he ordered the commander at Fort Sumter to do exactly that thing which the South Carolinians had said would cause an attack. Uh, some people might think that Mr. Roosevelt wanted to get us into World War II, as David mentioned. You may recall we had to wait for Pearl Harbor. So if, in fact, the Iranians aren't going to compromise, it would be best if somebody else started the war. So they started, in order to get all the wars, they attacked themselves and blamed it on the country they wanted to go to war with. I put those pictures in to try to help you comprehend it, and just in case I'm telling you one more time. Yeah, after 93 days after uh, March 11, 2011 tsunami and multiple uh, nuclear meltdowns that we've never seen on the planet before, Canada lifted all restrictions on food imports from the entire country of Japan. But 55 countries banned it from 14 prefectures. Canada said, no, it's all good. Now, everybody knows Canada was captured by the nuclear industry in the 40s. It's 100% capture in the government and universities and the medias, and now it's just ridiculous in Canada. D Canada really doesn't exist. It's a big nuclear shithole. 14 prefectures were banned by 55 countries, so Canada removed the restrictions meant... Japan, Japan couldn't ship the food from all those nuclear wastelands anywhere, only Canada. And now everybody in Canada is sick. That's Hinkley Point, surrounded by farms in the United Kingdom, newest nuclear plant. And Sizewell C, which they just announced yesterday, that they're going to go ahead with. Uh, from the original, they said, well, seven years ago, it's going to cost $18 billion, and people fought about it, and they finally they got their own way. And, that was the end of it. Now everybody predicted, including me, when because we covered that back then, that the price will at least double anyway before it was finished. But it's actually thirty-nine billion before it even starts, which means it's going to double again. And because it's surrounded by farms, and because the size of these reactors, there's going to be just incredible amount of people poisoned because of it. 
Now, the radioactive fallout is not harmless and innocuous or benign. May be worse than thought. Now, studies from last year indicate that radioactive water will contaminate the entire Pacific Ocean in just six years. Kim Minji reports. This graphic shows the gradual contamination of the Pacific Ocean due to leaks of radioactive water from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. The simulation, which was run by a German marine research institute, shows the entire Pacific waters being polluted by radioactive water in just six years. The problem with that story was that the radioactive fallout, this is France's model, covers the planet in 16 days. This is uh, 10 million becquels of cesium per square meter, cubic meter of air. There's lots of studies of a million becquels of xenon 133. There's studies of 20 million atoms, particles of the iodine 131. And then you know there's 31 times more iodine 129. There's another study from Ottawa, Canada of 220 million atoms. After the accident, they came out and showed you the tsunami map. When you got hyped up, thought it was radiation because that's what they told you. They came out and told you, you guys are stupid. In reality, that, that was Noah's tsunami, right? But that was Noah's radioactive dispersal model, and they hid that away from you. Not trusting in the industry or the government, I decided to go look myself. And for that, I apologize. Apparently, that made me the worst human in history. And my name will be reflect that for the rest of my life, because I chose to go look myself. I have been attacked relentlessly by thousands of public relations firms. Go look up my name on YouTube or something. Find a vile fucking shit they're saying about me. And it worked 100 percent. The attacks worked. They won. There's no doubt about it. I covered, for six years, I launched expeditions from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska for four to five to six months a year, and I didn't come home during it. Because what we discovered in the nuclear wasteland, that is Japan, fallout had severely harmed the species. And I know because I was out there boots on the ground year after year after year looking for my old friends to your left. They're gone. You'll never take the picture to the left or you'll never take that picture again. You'll never take that picture again because a perpetual radioactive fallout from a nuclear wasteland has now sealed our fate. The species didn't come back. They didn't come back because it wasn't just sea emissions. It covered the entire planet in just about 20 days. And so after scouring the coastline for six years and being vilified and demonized for actually going out and seeing if the species were actually healthy, to my absolute horror, the species are gone. And so now I had no choice, I had no choice but to beat the shit out of myself year after year after year, and the radioactive fallout never stopped coming. The model on the bottom right hand is 20 days of radioactive fallout. The whole planet's literally covered in day 20. And you'll never take the spit, you never, like, the birds will fly along the coastline and all those species to the left is what they ate. All these species are what the birds were feasting on. At low tide, everything was exposed, and after 20 days, everything was on a path of no return. So after six years, we quantified the species didn't come back. And that's the end of it. That's, there is no further way. When I came ashore, they arrested me and gave me gag orders. And the longest they can give me gag orders was three and a half years, about assets, what I like to call, that they were trying to protect, I'm assuming. So this is why Japan is telling you there's only 0 0.06 grams getting out of buildings that don't exist anymore because 
they don't want you to realize what just took place over the last decade, do they? We know. And by going out and taking pictures and videos and documenting the coastline, how does that make me the worst person in human history? Because the industry can't hide from that. Why didn't everybody warn you or say climate change is killing all the species, for instance? Because guess what climate change is? It's 80 years of radioactive fallout. Imagine a snowstorm where after 20 days, the whole planet is one big snowstorm. The snow never melts and never goes away, ever. Now, call that radiation, but you can't see it or hear it or feel it or taste it or smell it or pick it or th pick it up or throw rocks at it or perceive it, but it's absolutely everywhere now. And the studies I showed you earlier of 220 million atoms of just the iodine-129, for instance, that don't go away for 150 million years. It saturates the thyroid glands of all the species and they stop reproducing. And they, their life cycle is quicker than me and you. They don't live to be 100. In the first year in Japan, it was 865,000 cancers. Not everybody has health care. Not everybody was diagnosed. And all of this misery from a few buildings, and f unfortunately, that's so. That's how this industry, and this industry is well aware of these issues. All governments are well aware of it. All nuclear scientists are well aware of everything I just showed you. And from 80 years ago till now, they've done the same thing where they covered up every facet. So you couldn't comprehend the madness that, and now every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms, every one. And they know that that's the stupid idea because you're going to poison everybody all day, all year, at all nuclear power plants for hundreds of miles in any direction. That's how the radioactive fallout works. This is not an accident. This in industry actually hates your guts and are working hard to get rid of you. Every direction you can look, they're coming into your life. Geiger count or Smoke detectors in your house have americium-241. If you crush that up and put it in somebody's drink, <coughs> you won't have to deal with them in a couple of years. Why are they doing that? Because they don't want to store it for a quarter million years. They want you to throw it in your landfill where it eventually ends up into your water tables and poisons you and the eight million species. Irreversible heart damage for children with 50 becquerels a kilogram. Irreversible heart damage. Irreversible. I'm going to say it again because apparently I, like, I've been doing this for how long? Here's how evil the industry was originally. They raised the limits for children to get iodine pills for the thyroid gland 75 times higher than was recommended by the World Health Organization so they couldn't get it. And now children are being born at the rate of 14,200 out of 100,000 across Japan need open heart surgery because they're much more vulnerable than me or you. If you compare Chernobyl to Fukushima, how the hell does Chernobyl look worse? Fukushima was four reactors, and they all had decades of reactor cores at the top of the building. That's gone. Chernobyl was brand new with no fuel pools. Why do you think they're doing that to you? Boris Johnson, three years ago, removed restrictions for baby food, for baby food, and cereal, which is what kids eat before they go to school, for United Kingdom, and two years later removed it for everybody else. It's so as we'll see, I think, surrounded by farms to get the next ten generations. And our nuclear scientists working at the nuclear plant with the tungsten vest on? No. The mentally handicapped, the destitute, the victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language. They even took Madame Curry and weaponized her against your future 
by giving awards out to who can kill you the quickest. Geothermal can replace everything. All gas, oil, coal plants, and nuclear plants can be replaced by geothermal. And the only issue any geothermal plant got to get into super hot temperatures is drilling deep enough because nobody will invest in them, like the universities and the government agencies. Doomsday-like radiation. You know, what? look at the word what doomsday means. Doomsday. If Unit 4 fuel pool goes. Well, look, the media pretending they're in a fuel pool of Reactor 4 that doesn't exist. But at least somebody was warning you. It's Boris Johnson. Remove the restrictions on the nuclear wasteland for baby food and cereal two years before they removed it for adults. Do you understand why they done that and why that's so evil? You know, Rea Reactor 3, right, it, it, it actually blew up. And there's nothing left on the stump. There is nothing left on the stump. So they put these contraptions over it, and then the whole world media came out and said they were getting the fuel out of the pool of a building that no longer existed. For And it, I just showed you they done that for Reactor 4, right? Remember Reactor 4? We just talked about it. A lot. So if you took Reactor 3 and Reactor 4 and stacked them on top of each other, those stumps, they're no taller than the bottom part of this frame for the Kevlar sarcophagus for an identical reactor known as Reactor 1. And that, that piece right here is the same piece as right there. And so the fuel pools are actually at the top of the buildings. But they kept the stump of Reactor 3, they kept the stump of Reactor 4 so they can pretend they're in a building. If that's not evil, what the frig is? If that's not concerning, if that's not worth protesting, what is? Why wouldn't you protest something like that? Yeah, protest Trump all day. I wouldn't even bother subscribing. If I'm subscribed, I would actually unsubscribe because that means they're going to stalk you. You get lost. That's the last time you'll slap your willy around. They teach you and your loved ones to be completely incapable. They just mow you down. They mow down your brain cells constantly, I think. They fill your, your brain up with patriotism. And patriotism is going to Afghanistan and firing 5.5 million rounds a month for nine years to get 10,000 Taliban. Let's have paper plane uh, contests. Did you know that in North America, about 15% of children go to uh, college? In China, it's around 82%. <laughs> <laughs> Almost every kid on the planet knows that. Clip right here. There's probably not a single kid on the planet knows that they're faking that building. We're not even having conversations about buildings that are people are faking being in a building. That, that have you ever seen anything like that before? You have run out of time 80 years ago, and so you sh you need to get busy. You need to gut up. 
and it takes them for the planet. Grown food, this is 2013, 10 miles from the nuclear meltdowns where people can't even live. They're growing it a lot closer than that. They're growing it in Okuma, two kilometers away. Originally, there were academics, there were people in media speaking out, there was journalists, but if you go to those medias and put in those names, you won't find those journalists no more. Radio, if you do, they'll have regurgitated the official narrative which is the furthest thing from the truth. CCM and um, so like cesium was a very bad isotope but the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods is curium isotope, not cesium. It's curium. Uh, today they stopped reporting on tritium and Fukushima nuclear meltdown right across all media. There's nothing showed up. This is October the 1st. And I think they spent around a billion dollars since uh, July the 13th to promote the public relations and everything else, videos. Big money was spent on YouTube to make videos to tell a lie. So YouTube can't very well go ahead and have me up there also when they're making that kind of money. I can't even live stream on YouTube. And so YouTube has a little chat box, and there's usually six, seven hundred people in line, but they'll get to you. Uh, every time I used it now, there's nobody there only me, and they get to me right away. <laughs> That's the industry. I got a direct line into my computer and my YouTube channel. Direct line. They're there every time. And they make a paycheck by making sure you can't have a future. And they call themselves good people. They, they actually think of themselves as good people somehow. They're that delusional. They don't understand. Despite watching all my presentations, you couldn't pay me enough to tell that lie, see, that they're doing. There's not enough money in the universe that I would do a job like that. My life is worth a lot more than that. My, my name, my looking in the mirror, is important to me. I don't want to be a zombie like that. <sighs> officially, nobody died, but it, I've seen tons of people die. But officially, officially, nothing got out of buildings that don't even exist anymore. And now they're not even regurgitating that narrative. Uh, you know, I can honestly say there's nothing fun about what I'm doing because you're looking at this industry destroying everybody's future. Radioactive pollen, what do you think that destroys? The hives, the nest, and everything else, right? If you get rid of the pollinators and the moths and everything, what do you think is going to happen? Dozens of sievers, the stacks, not the buildings themselves, but the stacks, they're quite a little ways away from the buildings. The base of them is around 25 sievers. Just three sievers is a lethal dose for you. 25 sievers is, oh my goodness. This was Harvard done a lecture on Fukushima. I think it was the first three weeks or something after March 11th. I think this is in March. The date might be here, but I can't hang on. Okay, so they were asking about doses at and Fukushima. Uh, uh, in the US context, we'd think of RAM, and I assume in the Japanese context, people would think of sievert. Uh, the uh, fatal dose uh, from whole body exposure uh, median dose is around uh, 350, 400 um, rem, or three and a half to four sievert. D delivered pretty quickly. Uh, delivered uh, over a period of uh, hours, um, but in that case, death would follow over subsequent weeks. 
Um, but that, that gives you an indication of the sort of hazard that you're concerned. So a, f a few sieverts, if, you, if, you're, if the dose looks as though it'll be more than two or three sieverts um, over a period of plume passage, for example, then you know that you're in a potentially lethal situation, whereas speaking in micro sieverts is not helpful. Speaking in microsieverts and millisieverts. And so when you count radiation, you count fallout, you're, it's falling out of the sky. That's considered becquerels, they're physical atoms. And so it's like a snowstorm. And when they're pulsing, they pulse at the speed of light in every direction, each of these atoms. Not like a snowflake, but they, where they're just a snowflake, right? There's not like emissions from gas, oil, and coal. It's just carbon that makes things grow. It doesn't pulse energy at the speed of light every second. And if somebody tries to convince you that pulsing energy at the speed of light has no, doesn't, is no heat or energy, d you're delusional. Irreversible heart damage for children with 50 becquerels a kilogram. You can put 200 of these becquerels on the head of a needle, but you can't see them. Think of a becquerel as a physical a atom, isotope, pulsing energy every second for 150 million years, like iodine-129, for instance. And a lot of people say, well, iodine-129 doesn't pulse very far. Yeah, <laughs> but it destroys all the cells and chromosomes and DNA and, and causes lesions to the organs and everything else. And the body has to repair that every single second in every direction. But if your body is being saturated with it, you know, just on a small amount, your body can't keep up with it. Imagine constantly consuming it, eating it, drinking it. So if you're buying food around from farms within 50 miles of a nuclear power plant, guess what's happening? You're bioaccumulating it. There's cracks in the ground where the steam is coming out of the ground all day and all night, but you only get to see it in right conditions at 4.7 sieverts. 3 to 4 sieverts is a lethal dose. 4.7 sieverts and you can't see it, and it's steam, so it's mobile on top of that. And we've seen them abandoned the site multiple times. They're, you know, they're homeless and destitute and victims of society and immigrants. And Ralphie L. Grossi, the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, is running around telling everybody that only 2.2 grams is all that got out of the buildings that don't even exist anymore. And there's many of these buildings. And so far, you've only seen reactor three and four. You haven't even seen reactor one and two. But you better put that into the equation. So now the official story that's now buried. The debate is now over as of yesterday. And the media stopped reporting on tritium today, which is the, the fake story, pretending that only 2.2 grams is all got out of four of these buildings. Do you really think a nuclear scientist is going to go there in a paper suit? Do you really think a paper suit can somehow magically protect you at a nuclear meltdown site? Because the majority of people do. And that the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is not a regulatory agency, which is not, they don't have any authority, they don't have any solventry over any country. I mean, that there's no such thing as a safe level, and that the, the International Atomic Energy Agency standards are based on natural, like bananas and potato chips, not fuel rods, not uranium and plutonium and americium, and the stuff created by the splitting of atoms that are deadly to everything with replicating cells. Does that even make any sense? It's the equivalent of bringing your car to a flower shop and asking them to fix it. And getting mad because you don't. Japan's worst case scenario assumes significant public exposure to occur by the end of March the 12th the next day because of number one reactor. Uh, all reactors blew up by day five or day six. There was more explosions, but it was the same reactor. 
Probably the scariest picture imaginable is the media pretending they're on top of a building that don't exist. Why would you do that? Because the fallout is so deadly. And, and I showed you a bunch of that material. material. And there's 1,800 diseases and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries. And they say they never found any fish, only 34 fish, and those were the ones that escaped the jetty in front of the nuclear power plant. There's so much evidence to, to drive that one. Any journalist on the planet could come up and debunk any of their stories because there's legacy now of 12 years. But the fish story now is nothing happened because they know they killed the ocean. TEPCO finds the most polluted fish since Fukushima, 740,000 beckles a kilogram. They're only looking at cesium, for goodness sakes. Just the excrement from the worms, 60 miles from the nuclear meltdowns, is 1.4 million beckles a kilogram. And the worms are like Godzilla's, only about a 10% survival rate, and they're all deformed. Hot zones for Miyagi, Iwati, Tachigi prefectures, not just Fukushima. They banned the food from 15, for goodness sakes. 14 prefectures by 55 countries. You had the Japan Times, the biggest media on the planet, coming out and pinning for the nuclear industry, claiming radioactive milk for babies is okay because adults have potassium, but everything has potassium-40 in it. The microphone, everything, everything is potassium-40. There's not... I think it's part of the solar dust. It's created by the stars. It's what it's what we're all made of, right? But to come out and claim that and conflate natural stuff and man-made stuff, the most hideous of all crimes, contains radioactive potassium-40 via the banana equivalent dose banana. And so 4,000 beckles, these can't hurt you. You can't make a dirty bomb or a nuclear weapon or, or a chain reaction from potassium. Potassium not created by nuclear reactors. So 11 beckles a kilogram in children leads to permanent heart issues. And it can flate and equate. And, it, and I, I, I do actually have a way of explaining that that's much more eloquent. Because you just blew your only chance to have a conversation on this planet. And everybody came out and protested tritium instead of melted reactors' emissions. Gracious, don't put in. There we go. Yeah, there's a great way to explain that lie. There we go. So there's 88 curries per gram of cesium, and a and a Curry is uh, 37 billion atoms. So 37 billion anthropogenic man-made atoms times 88, which is a little over 4 billion atoms, or 4 trillion atoms, versus potassium-40, which is 0 0.000071 curries per gram. I missed one, hang on. Right, 
Right, a curry is 37 billion becquels. Becquel is atomic disintegration from the atom. So there's 37 billion atoms in a curry. And a curry of cesium, or a gram of cesium is 88. A gram of bananas is, um, it's, it's like a uh, stick of dynamite compared to a nuclear bomb if you scale it way up. But potassium-40 is natural. You know, your body replenishes. It's homeostasis. Your body can't take in any more than it needs. And everything has that particular attribute. It's stardust. It's, we're acclimated to it through genetic superior selection, right? It's, it's normal. It's harmless and innocuous and benign. Half the people in Japan were close to being evacuated. So if this happened, they were going to evacuate half the people in Japan. But thank God that didn't happen. I know what you're not saying. You're not saying, Dana, wait a second, that actually happened. Look at it. I'm not talking to... Whenever I'm doing these shows, I'm never, ever talking to my regular viewers. I'm talking to the industry, I think, or I'm just talking. But I... I uh, I'm not trying to belittle anybody that's following these shows or anything like that. I'm trying to make it impossible for you to have a conversation about this subject and not win it. I believe that's what I'm doing. And I think I'm successful. Reactor 3 was fueled with plutonium the entire nuclear core was ejected into the environment. I don't know. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's gone. When you look at any nuclear scientist looked at these original pictures, they're like, holy smokes, reactor 3 and 4 are gone, which meant that you made plumes to cover the planet in about 20 days. Had a second meltdown a week after the first well, I don't know if that's true because you blew the reactor core and the fuel pools right out of the building. So I think what they were doing, they were trying to talk about reactor 2. In fact, the radiation levels at the site were so high, helicopters couldn't go there, which means they can never go back there. And the only people they sent in there was the homeless and the destitute. But Helen Calicott... Um, disenfranchises as by robots. High radiation forces withdraw all workers. March the 18th, all the reactors were melted down and gone on the 16th. And so that was the cover story, see? Here's the truth. We may not be able to live in Japan someday. That day was March the 16th. Should have been long gone by March the 16th. You need to fly the coop. Everybody should own a plane so that they have a meltdown and you can get on it and go. Because that's the only way you can have a real future. Radioactive pollen. And everybody worldwide now is watching the destruction of the bees. And you can, there's a lot of things we can blame it on. And, and true, you know, Monsanto hated the bees. It's easy to say that. But if you look from at the statistics of 2011 onwards and the decade before it, you'll see Fukushima show up in all kinds of facets of your life. Oh. And I use the thermos. Sometimes you got to leave the top off so you don't accidentally scald yourself, right? Japan's prince son. Nobody died. Nobody got injured at Fukushima. So, I mean, that's one thing we've seen with all princes worldwide is that same attribute where they'll come and cut your throat because they don't want to lose influence. They don't want. They don't want to lose power. And it's better that everybody dies than they be embarrassed. And instead of doing the moral and ethical thing and being and standing tall for the whole world. They take the most cowardly route out. Japan Times column, November the 2nd, 2011. Reality is setting in. As the public, possibly worldwide, sickens over time, the truth will come out about Fukushima. Now, 
way too late. But they acknowledged that it was catastrophic just by framing a narrative that way. Unprecedented mass mortality on the West Coast beginning the summer of 2011. Millions and millions of species dying. And uh, I went to Banfield and tried to interview the director of Banfield, which is a research facility in Clackwitz, or I'm um, not sure if it was Clackwitz Sound or, or Euclid Bay. But they're right out and right alongside the Pacific. There's thousands of islands along that area. And I went in, I was out doing research expeditions. I went in to ask him where were the periwinkles, where, which are sn big snails, where were the sea urchins, where were the sea cucumbers, where were the species, the 8 million species. Where were all the sponges, the 84 species of sponges? Where were the 74 species of star spe starfish that came in multiple vibrant colors? Where were the sea anemones? There were around 78 species of sea anemones, and each species came in multiple vibrant colors. Where was the where was the clams? Where were the oysters and the gooey ducks and the scallops and the razorback clams, the little necks, the manillas? Where were the the sand that the species that makes up the sand on the beaches of seventy or twenty seven thousand islands. These islands all had beaches made up of shellfish. Deteriorating. And I dove that coast, you know. I remember one day that uh, it wasn't the first time, it was uh, it wasn't the last time, but it was the first time where I had dove I was diving along the wall looking for a place that I, I can settle down and work. And uh, we were doing food harvesting. And so I come around a corner where I, I was working on this, rocks had fallen down this cliff into the ocean. And I was, I don't really like it because when the rocks, you got all these big rocks pile on top of each other, they're full of caves and some pretty big impressive sized <laughs> creatures live in these caves including the Joint Pacific Octopus, which can grow and does 150 pounds and 15 feet span. It's a very, it's a, and it's a very inquisitive creature and you can't get it off you when it ties onto you. But there's many, many other creatures and it's just spooky, right? Nothing worse than working underwater anyway because it's spooky as hell. But when you're working in all these caves in front of you and you're working past them, anyway, I come to this section where it, it was just kind of sand. It looked like sand. And as I got closer, uh, I real I was just going to swim across the bottom wall because it dropped off all of a sudden. And so I'll just swim right across to the other side. And when I was, there was about a 50 foot depth there. And what I was looking at was around 50 feet of clams. And these these were all different types of clams. It was like 50 feet tall, you know, where they, they had just died on top of each other and they just made this whole wall of dead shells and there were all kinds of different stages of decomposition. But it was all the abalone and gooey duck and, and little clams, the manilas, the, the razorback clams. There was all kinds of different oysters. There was all kinds of different... Um, Uh, scallops, just, just snails. It was just, it was amazing. And so when I was doing research expeditions for years, and after Fukushima on the west coast of Canada, from British Columbia to Alaska, and we documented the pictures are up at my website, the nuclearproctologist.org. And I don't hide away from anybody ever. I'm a very public person. And and therefore, by proxy, I'm very honest, very straightforward, very frustrated that the world is in silence and, and terrified and horrified and inconsolable that the world is silent. And so I'm here every day trying my best. That sometimes I don't do a good job of it. Sometimes I lose my mind because I don't understand why the world is so silent or why they're so malicious uh, to deny what's going on. I do understand it, but... The heartlessness of it is too much to bear for me sometimes, many times. 
but to go along on these research expedition meander through 27,000 islands just taking my time what I started realizing was the beaches that are made of shellfish breaking down had no shellfish on them there's no babies no adults let alone the other species and with a 19 foot tide exchange each day you can only live in denial for so long and when you're in that environment that's not that long is not very long at all but for the last number of years it was a horrific experience not to see anything return that was the hope that was a dream was not just to document the extinction but to document if the species were going to return or not we knew they weren't going to return after the first year, but you still had to quantify it by doing the field research. And the attacks upon me while I was on the ocean for four to five months at a time were relentless. It was relentless. Now, I wasn't home to defend myself, and there was nobody defending me. But without the documentation, I felt that the world wouldn't have a chance unless it probably didn't have a chance, but it would certainly wouldn't have a chance if it didn't documented it and put it for free for everybody so they can't deny that the information existed. And it's, I think it's safe to say that there's none of these in the industry worldwide that don't know who I am. And by proxy don't know the information exists, that we had a major extinction event. Cataclysmic die-off of birds in the entire west coast. And you know the pictures I showed you where there's no species left on the coastline. If they were there, that wouldn't have happened. Because if the migratory wasn't at its peak, they could have went and, and they do. They go and subsidize your food in the tidal zones among the 700 algaes that have around 5,500 invertebrates without the backbones, like little shrimp. Many, many species. Or the cassiniochlets, the dove kites, the little shorebirds are dependent upon those species. There was 30,000 insects in that zone too, but they disappeared too. There was an incredible diversity at the high tide lines of the British Columbia tropical rainforest coastline with 27,000 islands, which creates this incredible, incredible environment, just meandering you know, to visit every island will take you 71 years. So going up there and meandering for four to five months, you still can't cover everything. And so what I was doing was concentrating on pinch points where the open ocean had to pinch through a group of islands to get to the interior massive amount of islands. And so if it's not going to be in those pinch points, it's very unlikely you're going to find it beyond that. Because those pinch points are where you get the greatest flow, the most oxygen, the most nutrition rich, the most circulation, the most fresh water, the most vibrant area, the most dangerous area, by the way, the most unpredictable. And we tackled that year after year as much as possible. And when the storm weather was too rough, we tackled the interior, we being me. Shit on the entire time for going out and checking myself. Literally, today I'm considered a monster for going out and looking. The species died of starvation because we wiped out all the food chain. We broke the food chain in the first year complete. The media and the pundits, like Jerry Thomas, Dr. Jerry Thomas, who assassinates children with radiation for a hobby, so we got to stop the reports from coming out like I was doing, for instance. And this Imperial College has been funding her for all these years to destroy your future. Fun Listen to the words I just said to you. Imperial College of London has funded a monster for years to make sure you can't have a future. The monster probably would have done it for free on top of that. Like the other monsters, Gunderson. Move south of the equator. If reactor four goes, move south of the equator. So all anybody and I did many times. Reactor four is gone, but like Arnie Gunnison, they pretend it's not. Arnie Gunnison was fed to those coming into this with little or no knowledge. 
Helen Callicott, Christopher Busby, same thing. Poster inside of Fukushima. This is not the end. This is the beginning of a new nuclear age. That's the beginning of a new nuclear age. It's right there. Cut your throat and their own and their loved ones at the same time. So they can make a million dollars a year. Radiation contaminated prefectures like Chiba, which is right alongside of Tokyo, 20 kilometers away, should also start a serious health damage survey. They can't get rid of the ashes from the incinerators. They can't get rid of the garbage because it's so radioactive. They can't get rid of the sewage because it's so radioactive. They can't get rid of the sediment from the water reclamation facilities because they're so radioactive. Which means you can't drink the water or shower or do your laundry or cook your food without getting incredibly contaminated ending up with debilitating illnesses at some point, if not right away. There was 865,000 extra cancers in the first year. That's pretty well right away. Not everybody got health care. Not everybody was diagnosed. And cancer is just one of 1,800 illnesses that you've got to be seriously worried about because of radiation. A state secret bill was meant to suppress Fukushima news. Could face years in prison. A man's mouth was stuffed with cloth for voicing opposition in, in the diet, which is like a parliament or a congress. In, in Japan, they call it a diet, where it dies, everything good dies. And, the, and a protester, the, the incredible hubris of these people, the security stuffed a cloth in a man's mouth. The people you hire to protect you. To call nuclear meltdowns a leak, I think, will ultimately be one of the worst crimes imaginable also. No one died. That's what the Japanese prince son said. No one died. Death rates might actually give the creeps to some people. It was over, thir almost 13,000 people died in a single month of extra heart attacks compared to any other year, month of any other year in history. And canc cancer rates we know in the first year were 865,000 extra cancers. Mass die off of sea creatures of all species, starving to death as the food chain continues to collapse. I just covered, picked up an article today of puffins right where I'm to, a complete failure at a breeding colony. And the ones that are trying to breed are trying to get breed again this uh, late last month. When normally in August, the fledglings are already on their way. They were laying eggs and trying to raise chicklets. A total failure. And the media, of course, you know who they blamed it on? I ain't nuclear. Blame it on your tin cans, your pop bottles, your garbage. Mass starvation event plagued the West Coast. You're talking about from Alaska to Mexico. Disease outbreak on the U.S. West Coast, the largest ever seen in an animal population, any population of animals. Tens of millions dead. And it wasn't a disease outbreak. It was a starvation event broke that food chain. And the nuclear industry continued to make sure it can never have a food chain by hiding it, not coming up with any solutions, by only using the most vulnerable of society to do the world's most dangerous jobs. It's like a scene from a horror movie along the West Coast. There's no food out there anywhere. I was out there in 2015 on the research expeditions, and this is we're posting the, the pictures whenever I can get in port and find bandwidth. A Japanese radiation expert after f March 11 leave Tokyo, leave the country, and said, 
Canadian Embassy in Tokyo, 225,000 becquels a square meter. That's on the ground we're talking about. That's not the, not counting the airborne. There's 225 on the ground. It's a million becquels a cubic meter for sure. X-ray-like images show radioactive contamination spread through the leaves and grass collected from Fukushima to Tokyo. Assimilated and everything. Levels on the U.S. West Coast spiked to 1,000. Actually, it was 10,000 according to the IR, IRSN, which is the French government's uh, models, was around 10,000 becquels a cubic meter of air of cesium-137. By the way, that model is only based on nine days. Agency was funding projects to monitor online information about Fukushima crisis, around-the-clock monitoring of blogs on nuclear power. You really think they give up that cash cow? And they got no one to pick on in reality, only me. No one's running an educational program. Everybody's capable. They got $65,000 just to monitor when they were burning radiation in incinerators in local communities. It was around $55,000 to Twitter to get rid of me and a few other people. Many spots 15 kilometers out have higher radiation at Fukushima Front Gate. There's minimal day and no go zone, like a 12-hour plane ride. So to claim and conflate, flying on an airplane with the nuclear wasteland. And that's Washington piece of post. Wasteland surrounds the nuclear disaster site and then says it's like a 12-hour plane ride. They, they shouldn't even exist after a statement like that. Japanese government monitoring tweets and blog posts. Experts believe the government officials cover up true extent of the public health risk, can no longer pull the wool over the public's eye. 12 million yen to censor Twitter, which is around 55,000 US, being spent on a city starting to burn radioactive debris from, they, they grind up the debris from Fukushima and brought it to prefectures across the entire country and burned it in the incinerator, and that releases it into the environment because you can't destroy it. Like it, it doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. But that's what they've done. So the intentions were to poison everything and everybody because that's the only, there's no other logical reason and everybody participated in it. The police allowed it to happen. Over and over and over and over for 12 years. Students being taught pro-nuclear propaganda. It says less risky than dying of old age. The ultimate insult to take the children and weaponize them against their communities and their friends and their families and their loved ones. And say they got the moral high ground somehow, magically. Teacher, I'm lying to a room full of students. Fukushima city, city every house in Fukushima city should be evacuated, should have been evacuated. Uh, you're talking about every house in Fukushima City, which I think is 90,000 homes, is entitled to be decommissioned because of radioactive pollution, which means you can't live there. And if every house is contaminated, then you, the city is unoccupiable. And the numbers we're talking about are, are um, would quantify the evacuation in a normal society at the drop of a hat. So, so criminal to do something like that. So disconnected to do something like that. Major Japan paper, cancer risk in Fukushima, probably infinitesimal. More radioactive contamination should be allowed in food and where people live. A major Japan paper. There's 1,800 other diseases besides cancer. Back in Windscale, when in which is now called Cellophile in the United Kingdom, which is a reprocessing disease factory 
for nuclear fuel and you take it from other countries and do it and poison the population by doing this, uh, other people's fuel. People were taken from movie theaters by police, forced to go into the reactors and push the fuel rods out of the reactors. The military picked men off the street to battle the meltdown. Women, minorities, homeless, and prisoners used by the nuclear industry for the most dangerous work. And everybody, and the industry itself is well aware of all of it. Government evaded emitting meltdowns and delayed disclosure to data from radiation. Government's trying to stop their own citizens from taking their own radiation measurements. So what they done was a couple of really despicable things. SafeCast was created by an American group, like Asby Brown and a few more of them. And they had, they were selling kit. You had to build your own Geiger counter. These are use, literally useless. And that was considered the official numbers. There wasn't a single university went out, obviously, because now we know universities is the breeding ground for evil. And their schools of mass destruction are nothing less. Public anger exploding as Japan discovers more about the government downplaying the spread of the Fukushima radiation and health dangers. Typical paid for the creation of a blacklist of actors and musicians who are against the nuclear industry. So have you ever wondered why actors and musicians are not out there writing songs about, right? Because that's what throughout history, you know, tin soldiers and Nixon's coming. We're finally on our own. This summer I hear their drumming. Four dead in Ohio. This was a song in response to students who wanted to end the war in Vietnam, there was four of them were killed by over-enthusiastic security scum. State secrets bill meant to suppress the Fukushima news. We covered that one. Radiation forecast can by no means be released to the public, decided the government March the 15th. That was a nice of them. You only hired them, gave them pensions, gave them health care, you gave them the authority, the monetary, you gave them the equipment, and when you finally had an event after all these decades, they decided to come by no means released information that you funded for decades and decades to protect yourself and your country and your gener future generations. And, and how often do we hear world you know, the academics talking about the 8 million species. Journalists covering Fukushima reportedly harassed and imprisoned on return to Tokyo. What are the names of the people you met in Fukushima, asked the officer. Nuclear scientist Nagasaki, and so the police, the police, the police suppressing the destruction of their own country and their own health and their own loved ones and their own future. The police. The integrity of a fucking snake in the grass. Nuclear scientist Nagasaki survivor canceled Fukushima press conference because the government officials were worried about causing widespread fear. It wasn't government officials. Is they're not. They're not like to get rid of the word government. The word government has made a lot of people sick with power. No one died, no one got injured, says Japan Prince's son. Newspaper ignores scientific models showed Fukushima radiation impacting the West Coast. Failed to inform the readers by only reporting on the discredited tsunami wave. What illness of the mind must people have to lie about the threat? Really, what, what, what illness, right? And that was the map right there. This was Vancouver, the province from British Columbia, Canada, I believe. You may have seen this 
uh, a resting image online. You may have even shared it on Facebook, and that's because they put that out there everywhere to make you do that. And then came out and said, look at this, no matter how, it must be something stupid if you believe that, because that's the tsunami map. Meanwhile, there was endless models, a perpetual amount of scientific models from major credible institutions worldwide. To protect the image of an industry that has no right to exist. We were punished if we tried to resist. Does that sound like nuclear scientists or academics or nuclear corporations? Only 10% of the lunches in the nuclear wasteland are tested for radiation, and the people that are doing the testing didn't even know they had the equipment. The A-10 Warthog only shoots dirty bombs in, uh, in the Kuwait invasion from the Baths party and from Iraq, Saddam Hussein, when they were leaving after looting Kuwait, they were leaving in Rolls Royces and Bentleys and everything else, and they had went into all the jewelry shops that they could find and, and looted everything. And so the U.S. military took depleted uranium, around 700 tons of it, and sprayed the convoy of loot coming out of the city on d in the desert on the highway, which is still buried there today, but it's so radioactive you can never go near it again. And the horror stories from that is shocking, really. They had, uh, the Bath Party had lined up conscripts who were shoeless, so they couldn't run away in the desert, right? And put them in trenches. The Americans came through with their Abrams tanks, which only shoot at 155 millimeter depleted uranium rounds, by the way which used to be called Dolram, depleted uranium low-level radioactive material, was somehow or another they removed the latter part of that acronym, and I, I to this day I still don't know why, or who, rather. But just uh, A-10 Warthog shoots a ton and a half a minute of depleted uranium munitions. Dirty bombs, You've, every one of them, are, all the attributes of a dirty bomb. And a uh, Japanese physicists at a Hamburg conference in Germany estimated that it was equal to 44,000 Hiroshima bombs worth of low-level radioactive fallout. 44,000 Hiroshima bombs. Because the material has gone through a chain reaction. And it's pyrophoric, so it catches fire as it's, as it's going through the air at 4,000 feet per second. And if you've ever seen the A-10 Warthog, you know what I'm talking about, how many uh, rounds, it's a ton and a half a minute. So it's meant to get the job over with immediately, uh, overpower anything. Now, you're only supposed to use that against hardened targets, not against Rolls Royces. And, and so then... Here was Kuwait had lost all their jewelry shops and banks and stuff like precious metals, and they couldn't retrieve it because it's all radioactive. This model was based upon uh, 20 days right there. This is France, is another model from France of the cesium-137 dispersal around the planet. The model is 10 million becquerels a square meter. So all the insects, birds, now it's not, this is not the only model of, and this is not the only model of, there's many different, like there's uh, sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs from the sulfur, accepting uranium, plutonium, americium isotopes into them, becoming super hot particles from spraying salt water on enormous temperatures at the meltdowns in desperation so that you thought they had it under control, but it had, it was the worst thing you could have done was spray salt water on these things. It was better just to let it burn, for goodness sakes. The buildings, did I mention the buildings are gone? The reactor fuel pools are gone? You any idea how late it is? How far down the hole we actually are? 
Workers said, I believe the country would be evacuated, number four, fuel pool collapse. Should have been hundreds of thousands of people working furiously every day. That's right. But see, by day six, this, they knew this is what the buildings would look like when they can get remote control cranes in there to strip it away. And they should have obviously stripped it right to the dirt. There's nothing left there. They, they only left that there so they can put covers on it to manipulate you and coerce you and, and deceive The Canadian you. Society for Chemistry operates under the umbrella of the Chemical Institute of Canada. And so this presentation, uh, this panel discussion is brought to you uh, jointly by the Chemical Institute of Canada, the local section. Just hang on. This is, um, I can't remember his name, thank goodness. Uh, and living next to a nuclear power station can actually contribute uh, uh, less than your loved one uh, when it comes to... Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm with my myself as one of the principal investigators, was awarded $6 million. So... Why did the audience laugh on cue? Try this again. Uh, and living next to a nuclear power station can actually contribute uh, uh, less than your loved one. Uh, so you get more radiation living next, sleeping next to your loved one than you do from a nuclear meltdown. Chris Sarkozy, and he downplayed the 20 million atoms, particles of radioactive fallout from Fukushima it was despicable, but at the end of it, you notice he says he got six million dollars. Uh, when it comes to <laughs> why did everybody laugh? Because it's an outrageous lie. How did they all know it was a lie? Because the audience was seated, uh, right? Um, so I'm with myself as one of the principal investigators was was awarded six million dollars. Awarded six million dollars. So he got nothing to disclose, but he should have disclosed that, shouldn't he? And the International Atomic Energy Agency has done everything in their power and every enormous amount of influence and power to cut your throat. They've done everything. <sighs> it, but it's, it's, hard, it's hard to comprehend how evil the whole story really is. Hang on. Almost dear. That again. Back, back. Let me get a look here. Here we go. I'll show you one of probably one of the most shocking stories. I know of is this is just utterly shocking. Seniors were urged to eat Fukushima rice to help the farmers. You know, the farmers are growing food right alongside of one ton bags of radiation farmers.
A Tokyo senior is waging an individual effort to get the elderly people to eat the rice grown in the nuclear wasteland to help the local farmers struggling with rumors that their crops are radioactive. So rumors the crops are radioactive and to make sure the grain, make sure the grain isn't consumed by the vulnerable younger generation because it's radioactive. The elderly must eat the Fukushima rice. This is the Japan Times, the biggest media in Japan. The elderly must eat it. Work all your life and then you're supposed to get sick and die. The most brutal death imaginable is radiation poisoning. The or now, they put the, the fax number to order food at the bottom of the story. Those interested in buying the rice can pay cash on delivery. Group. So they had about 700 kilograms was bought by an elderly cure facility in Tokyo. They're bragging about it. That, however, is the minimum compared to Fukushima 240,000 ton annual rice yields, like a half million. Um, half a billion pounds, basically. And also, there was no regulations obliging restaurants and makers of the ra uh, box lunches, which uses rice cakes and rice cookies and stuff like that, to list the origin of the rice they use, and it may lead to children eating the rice. What do you mean, may? How can it not? Therefore, why don't the elderly? Farmers are required to check the radiation levels in the rice, not the academics, not the government, not corporations, not people that know what they're doing, but farmers. We're given Geiger counter says if it's over 500 becquerels, you can't sell it, but it's okay if you mix it with stuff that's not that high to bring the numbers down. And the 500 becquerels a kilogram they're allegedly checking for cesium with Geiger counters we know now didn't work in hindsight. The farmers were given Geiger counters and told to check the food themselves. And then the insult to injury to put the fax similar the the fax number F work at Fukushima go on for ten thousand years longer than human history. Worst case scenario was abandoned Tokyo, two hundred forty kilometers away. Well, obviously, it should abandon Tokyo, as the public possibly worldwide sickens over time. To work at Fukushima is going to be given an order to die. $190 tax ride home for workers to get home from free medical clinic, and they're making $11 a day. The homeless, the destitute, the victim of society. Debris from the nuclear disaster site itself is being ground up and burned in other parts of Japan. If that's not insanity, what 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 is the definition of insanity then? Never-ending disaster. Japan is stumblingly, helplessly from one crisis to the next. TEPCO clearly just hanging on. Government promotes the safety of Fukushima food in Europe. That's Ichibori. Right? Uh, he never slept for like four days after the meltdown started. He'd done several hundred interviews in about four days, and he told everybody, there is no meltdown, there is no releases, he's still doing today. Now he's the governor of a uh, prefecture with millions of very vulnerable people. Ichibori kicked off uh, Thursday a tour of Britain and France publicized the safety of food from Fukushima. 
publicize the safety of food from a nuclear wasteland. You picked up 30 million one-ton bags, which is 3% of the land, they say. Uh, there's so much airborne, the reactors are still melting down. Temporary, this story here, temporary storage site hinders farmers. A rice pad is in the foreground serves as a temporary storage site for piles of radioactive soil, one-ton bags. But uh, to get there, you got to go past millions of one-ton bags of radioactive soil. You can't sleep there. Over 90% of the temporary storage site lies on farmland. There's 105,000 sites in 2019. 90% of them are on farmland. And just because you picked up the bags doesn't, it means you can never go back there. You gotta, like you can, if you're only picking up 3% of the land, then everything else just flows back into those places right away. Pretending that they're coming out of Reactor 4, and look how tall Reactor 4 is, right? That's the top of it right there. But you can see the, the cutout on the back of there. That's a lethal dose stood up right there. You're not, there's nowhere to work. You can't work with a paper suit on. If a nuclear scientist is there and they try to give him a paper suit, he's gonna run away. He'll push you out a window from a skyscraper to get away from you. Let's put it that way. Fukushima disaster mag mega manga in Japan. Nuclear Man by DC Comics. Kids play with reactor toy sets. And that's, it's, it's social engineering gone kooky. Smalling mascot asked Fukushima kids to gargle to stay safe from radiation. Radioactive sparkles on happy children. A grinning bird mascot has been enlisted to teach children in the nuclear wasteland to stay safe from the radiation and escape from the region's crippled nuclear power plant. It's such a bizarre statement because the whole country is incredibly radioactive. But to keep kids in the nuclear wasteland, uh, how, how can you reconcile that? How can you ever look an academic or scientist in the eye without spitting in it? How does that work? The Economist, James Colbert wanted to be the lead at The Economist. He was hoping to get that job, right? You know, he used to own Fukushima Update and sold it to Fukushima Reconstruction uh, Government Organization. And Fukushima Update, he gave the keys away to all the scum so they can post all their lies and bananas and potato chips they wanted. Kids need to gargle after being outside. Well, people wouldn't let their children go out for the first couple of years after Fukushima the ones that were in and all, instead of moving them out of the nuclear wastelands. I can't understand any of it. How can you keep your children there? Alice in Wonderland was used to convince the children in Japan that nuclear power is safe. Children play at a nuclear theme park. Character sings nuclear is safe, efficient, and good for you. Fukushima superhero, superhero. Superhero. No, they're not talking about their grandparents. They can never be a kid's superhero anymore. Tells kids the arch enemy is a bad rep reputation from nuclear crisis. Fights against fool and sloppy people. Now go home to your homes in Akuma and Futabak. And don't leave the garden because it's illegal. They open up these little areas with the white last year and the yellow this year. And you can go into your house, but you can't leave your house. When you do it, you can't go anywhere else but leave the prefecture, basically, or the, the nuclear wasteland itself. 
So the nuclear doesn't look so bad because now they can say, no, it's safe to go there, despite the fact nobody goes there. 13,646 of the 40, uh, 38,000 children with thyroid tumors pre-Fukushima nuclear meltdown in Japan, it was one in a million. Now it's, if you scale it up, it's 358,000 out of a million. Now the tumors, you're talking about two centimeters on the thyroid gland. You're like, David, well that's not too big, but the thyroid gland is three centimeters by five centimeters. And yes, it is big. It's a massive tumor. It's over half the size of the thyroid gland. Daughter had so many thyroid tumors, doctors can't count them. Imagine these couple of buildings, there's four of them all together. I only showed you two today and I apologize. But I'm hoping that it'll work. Here's your Neptunium 239 dispersal based on TEPCO's number covering the entire planet in 20 days. It decays to uranium. Uh, Plutonium-239 with a 24,000 year half-life. Don't worry though, there's Plutonium-239 dispersal models too based on TEPCO's numbers. You won't have to wait to get sick and fucking die. Radiation levels in the U.S. West Coast spiked to a million times normal, give or take nine million. One million and ten million atoms per cubic meter in the northern hemisphere because of a couple of buildings in stupid land Japan. Top government official Fukushima nuclear report was so shocking we decided to treat it like it didn't exist. A million Beckel xenon 133, 20 million particles of iodine 129, 131, 120 220 million of iodine-129. <sighs> There's plumes of the xenon-133, plume models of the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs, of the krepton-85. There's only a fraction of the isotopes. And all of them shows the same thing. Covers the planet in about 20 to 30 days. It never goes away. And it's currently happening at all 400 and 10 current nuclear plants worldwide. All the fuel pools on each site are hemorrhaging plumes like this into the environment each day. And this plume is basically a perfect model. Within 30 days, you lost, everybody lost their future. And not addressing it, not coming up with solutions, not having a conversation about it, is the stupidest route you could take. TEPCO doesn't work at Fukushima. The homeless are not taking the days off. It's the plumes are coming out of the ground at 10 sieverts an hour. You can't beat her. Don't worry, though, Dana. This is a Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering, Dana. You're not a professor of nuclear and quantum engineering, are you, Dana? Well, no, I'm not. Well, shut up, Dana. Shut up. Because they told me it's like three grams of sugar, Dana. You're full of shit, Dana. That's all I got out of there. It's three grams of sugar, Dana. 60 and older should appear to die at the Fukushima plant. No, not the gas plant, not the coal plant, not the oil plant, but uh, at the Fukushima plant. 60 and older should be prepared to die there because they love you so much. Tokyo vice governor suggested a Fukushima draft so your children go there. No, not the children of nuclear academics, but your children. Sale of foreign Geiger counters was banned. 16 dollars should be prepared to die. 16 dollars should be prepared to die at these disease factories. 16 dollars should be prepared to die there. It's time to make a geezer suicide. Geezer. So if you work all your life and you retire, you're a fucking geezer. You're a piece of shit. You're a worthless human, right? If somebody was ever to say that to me, that's the last time they'd speak any language for a long time. 
Weekends off at Fukushima. No. You had to run away. 16,000 people quit. It wasn't weekends off. 16,000 homeless and destitute victims of society and the immigrants didn't speak the language. Even though it was too stupid to be there eventually, but too late. In Tokyo, at 500 trillion becquerels a kilogram, significant consequences on the human. Significant. Our idea of health implications should change. High concentrations of hot particles in the Pacific Northwest. Ernie Gunnarsson, interviewed by Helen Callercott. Ernie Gunnarsson and Helen Callercott. They come out and tell you a little bit of truth and then tell you a massive amount of lies. And I'll, I'll, let, me, let me play a couple of the what the fuck clips. Now, I don't, the division. I'm sorry, I mean, that one's a little bit loud, isn't it? Now, I built, the division I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. And Unit 4 it has always been my biggest concern. If you watched our website, on the very first week of the accident, I was saying that if Unit 4 were to catch fire, you'd have to evacuate Tokyo. So, does, am I wrong in saying... Now, I built the division I ran... No, let me play the last part. First week of the accident, I was saying that if Unit 4 were to catch fire, you'd have to evacuate Tokyo. Were to catch fire. I was saying that if Unit 4 were to catch fire, You'd have to evacuate Tokyo. What does that look like to you? Why is that much left standing? There's nothing usable there. Helen Callercott on Unit 4. Uh, building 4 is also similarly fragile and it's got a huge cooling pool on top with all its fuel rods but they have been removing them. Uh, and it's been a very delicate procedure and they've removed almost all. So if that collapsed now, I think it would probably be okay. Let me try that again. Now, accident, I was saying that if Unit 4 were to catch fire, you'd have to evacuate Tokyo. So, Helen Calicut on uh, Building 4 is also similarly fragile, and it's got a huge cooling pool on top with all its fuel rods, but they have... It's got a huge cooling pool on the top. Huge, huge cooling pool. There's two of them, by the way, not one, Helen. And now she's scratching her head like, shit, I hope nobody calls me on this. I've been removing them. They have been removing them. But they're, they're not there. The building is not there, for God's sake. Uh, and it's been a very delicate procedure, and they've removed almost all. So if that collapsed now, I think it would probably be okay. Very convincing, eh? She was challenged eventually, a single time. Let me ask you this. Uh, you've said that uh, if the spent fuel pool in number four collapses, that you would evacuate your family from Boston. Do you think we would ever know the truth of what's going on there? And the reason I ask is because we've seen coverage in the uh, national news media here in the United States from ABC News and others that uh, take video cameras in saying that they're being given exclusive access to number four in the removal of the fuel rods, which is said to have begun. Uh, and, and what we see in the, the video being shared here in America is pristine, a pristine interior building. It doesn't look like a building in which the top blew off in a hydrogen explosion. The Japanese are very tidy people and they have by robot control and by human beings removed the debris from the top of building four and it does look pristine. She's done that hundreds of times, eh? 
by robots and by humans, by humans. With two legs, Dana. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, the unit four was um, uh, was damaged twice. It was damaged by by a st all of the earthquakes that occurred, and it was also uh, damaged by a series of explosions over um, the first week or two of the of the accident. So the, the the building is structurally weakened. Now Tokyo Electric's acknowledged that they went in in uh, in May and June of last year. This is more than a year ago, and put an enormous number of extra structural supports directly under the fuel pool to keep the bottom of the pool from breaking through. So that's Arnie Gunnarsson saying that TEPCO went in to the fuel pools, which is 100. 50 feet above whatever you stump you want to call that thing there and put structural supports under the fuel pool did you now arnie made the racks for the assemblies for 70 nuclear power plants just like fukushima in america so when you got helen and arnie gunnison and helen and caldicott with the latest on the meltdown interviewed with Helen, Hel Helen Caldercott, you got to be worried sick about what they're really up to. Unprecedented spike, unprecedented, unprecedented, unprecedented. 1,500 atoms of radioactive sulfur, this is the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs per cubic meter in the California air, along with everything else. This is NOAA's model based on cesium and iodine. Cesium red and iodine's yellow. Based on 40 days. Based on venting, not based on the actual detonations, the meltdowns, the, base, the actual inventories. That model is only based on 26 days, covers the whole planet. Marine, Fukushima release was so great that the radioactive aerosol in Washington were up to 100,000 times normal. 100,000 times weapons fallout. Radiation data from Seattle area survey may be withheld by the feds for national security reasons. Well, you. You paid. You created this to warn you. This section of that industry, genocide machine. You paid for them. You created that. You you gave people's jobs and pensions and health care. You gave them the monetary. You gave them the authority and the equipment to go find it once in a lifetime event. And when it happened, they said, "Well, no, we're just going to hide it," despite the fact studies were shown that the Xenon 133 persisted for weeks, you know, years, at 450,000 times above detection levels after Fukushima. 450,000 times. This is one of the models, by the way. And this top left-hand corner up there is based on 20 days. But the real models, when you look at them, are covering the whole planet in about 20 days. Is iodine-131 killing babies in Philadelphia? No, that was the curium isotopes, the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rod. Children with over 11 beck was a kilogram of cesium, which is irrelevant compared to curium and uranium and plutonium and americium and neptuniums, which covered the whole planet. Because most of the studies, and they only say that the only thing that got it is cesium. I've actually got them in interviews saying the only thing that got it was cesium. Like Lake Barrett, who was in charge of Three Mile Island with Arnie Gunnison, boiled off millions and millions of gallons two years later when nobody was paying attention of brutal radioactive water into the environment. Just release. It. It's all about releasing the atoms into the environment. Every fuel pool worldwide is hemorrhaging radiation in 24 hours. And there's a thousand fuel pools, and because the the reactor cores that are in the fuel pools, and there's multiple reactor cores in each fuel pool. Each reactor core powered a million homes, 
So you get the same atoms for millions and millions of millions of homes. These atoms, instead of boiling water, there's no containment, they're released into the environment, which is why almost every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms. And at 50 becquerels a kilogram, cesium-130 C is irreversible heart damage. You put 200 becquerels, uh, and think of a becquerel as an atom that pulses. And that's what the becquerel is, is a pulse every second at the speed of light. And so you can put 200 million of these atoms, a.k.a. becquerels, that'll pulse a becquerel each second, on the head of a needle and not see it. And a single atom in your body will trigger an autoimmune response to try to attack that for the, not try to, but will attack the atom in your body for the rest of your life and the damage it creates every second for the rest of your life. And that can overwhelm quickly your immune system, which leaves you more susceptible to pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless and innocuous and benign. Perhaps you need to wash your shoes and other things. No, you throw it away. Every time you got to go out, you should throw your shoes away. 360 atoms of radioactive sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs per day may be inhaled by Californians after Fukushima. That's another study, by the way, a separate study, independent study on the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyball arrival in the United States. Jerry Thomas, is the duty of the scientific community to reduce the public's fear, anxiety about radiation. And claiming that there's no health dangers from 876,000 millisieverts. Remember what the Harvard professor had said earlier about talking about microsieverts, there's no help. Well, uh, you're talking about there, that statement is 876,000 microsieverts. A microsieverts, think of it as about 150 or more atoms. So 150 times... 876,000 atoms uh, sequestered in your body. Every pulse in your body is wrecking DNA, chromosomes, and everything else. And your body has to repair that every second. It can't. It's called leukemia, by the way, and that, and that numbers. Scientists, the very lowest levels of radiation are harmful to life. We have to rethink exposure levels from nuclear plants. Every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms. As far as you can see, prime farmland. In Japan, you just don't even care about growing. I, I can't, I can, I can, and I've showed this, th what, several thousand times. I still can't get used to it. It still blows me away every time. And get you to kind of understand what kind of trouble you're in. I, Jimmy, the, the 14 prefectures that were banned by 55 countries to your left. They even put deadly prefectures. No, everybody's like, hey, what's Trump up to? I wonder if we should yell at him. 55,000 U.S. to censor Twitter. Easy money for social media. They can just hire a couple of heartless, spineless scum to censor you. And the nuclear industry can destroy their future and every, their loved one's future and everybody else's. TEPCO has worked vigilantly to shut out scrutiny of the ravaged plant's condition. So originally it was almost impossible to figure out which reactor was which or what was what. You had nobody, nothing on the planet would say that's this and that's that. UN Com United Nations, which is also known as the Military Industrial Complexes, chairman studying Fukushima, studying it, studying Fukushima. UN chairman that's studying Fukushima said we wouldn't expect to see health effects. Japanese government agencies funding project to monitor online information about the crisis, around the clock monitoring. I'm not, I can't even stream on YouTube or Rumble. Japan Times column as the public possibly worldwide sickens over time. The truth will come out about Fukushima.
Fukushima is the most serious man-made disaster in history. Obesity, if you got loved ones that gained weight all of a sudden in the last 10 years, guess what happened? Their thyroid glands got saturated and their immune system was destroyed and they gained weight is a marker of radiation brain damage, which means your thyroid gland is saturated your pituitary gland with radioactive hormones, for starters. It's like explosions going off in your cell every second, blows holes in your DNA, your chromosomes, your DNA, or your, your cells, and causes permanent lesions to your organs. And all the species, you're 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 way more tolerant than birds and insects and pets and small animals and kids. So the species stop reproducing. Do you really think you're not next? Radiation doses in the Northeast and Great Lakes were equal to the West Coast. Of course they were. The plume covered the whole planet in just 20 days. And we got endless models. And it's pulsing energy at the speed of light. It's like a snowstorm covering the whole planet. It never goes away. The snow never melts. Except it's not snow, it's radiation. And it's pulsing energy at the, almost at the speed of light every second. And you got 80 years of emission. But Fukushima was a pulse event. Doomsday-like radiation. If fire in the polar uniform... Uh. Well, Reactor 3 was worse than Reactor 4 because Reactor 3 was a Medusa, a mixed oxide fuel facility. But when you put two of them together, there are thousands of Chernobyls, just those two buildings. All of eastern Japan evacuated. The Fukushima plant was abandoned. It's, well, it's already gone. You're supposed to abandon all of eastern Japan and the Northern Hemisphere. Ambassador Murata writes to the UN soulless Secretary General, it's no exaggeration to say the fate of the Japan and the entire world, the fate of the entire world depends on number four not catching fire. Depends on that not happening. Guess what happened? And guess what happened there? And guess what happened in reactor two? And guess what happened in reactor three? The same thing. Pretending it didn't happen is not a future. You can't have a future by doing that. Lying and making things up and claiming only 2.2 grams of tritium got out of buildings that don't even exist anymore. There's going to be one hell of a price to pay for this. And guess what? There's uh, one hell of a price to pay for. We may not be able to live in Japan someday. That's one of the true statements you're ever going to hear. As the public possibly worldwide gets sick, the truth will come out. Potential global catastrophe from reactor 2 highly radioactive feud could make Tokyo uninhabitable. So why didn't 3 and 4 make it? They were infinitely worse, obvious, too. You know, right, number 3 was blown out. Yeah. I don't need anybody to tell me Reactor 3 and Reactor 4 are, are gone. Just two pictures. You see the pictures of Reactor 3 and Reactor 4 are gone. How is that up for debate? And so you got all the universities, all the academics, all the medias, all the key government agencies working double time to destroy everybody's future and you got very few if any people are trying to have a conversation so that all of that I showed you that no longer none of that any longer exists neither does this story anymore because they stopped reporting it on today but the official story now as of July the 13th of 2023 was if you divide that little bit of salt 22 times, that's what's going to come out of the site because nothing has ever got out. Despite everything I showed you, the two hours of evidence, two hours of nothing but evidence, just bam, pow, wham, boom, ding, dong, two hours of it. 
unassailable documentation, incontestable. The Fisher story is that didn't happen is equal to one sixteenth of that kind each year being released starting August the 24th, which happens to coincide with the same day that I was stopped from live streaming after a decade on YouTube and also on Rumble. But don't worry, I'm going to be here going to war every day, so... At least somebody exists that tells the truth and is trying to educate the population. I'm here to do the best I can. By the way, uh, they didn't fix the truck. We got to go back. We just bought a transfer case for nothing and had it installed and repaired. Oh, and and those front wheel bearings for both sides was expensive fucking things. They said. They're okay, I didn't need them, and I can't return them, by the way. No way to recover. But we'll figure something out, I guess, some way. I had to pull the boat down in the water yesterday, and my vehicle still got the exact same problems when I brought it to him. Say I'm heartbroken is an understatement. Say I'm having a nervous break, break, breakdown. I think that would be an accurate depiction. I'll see everybody tomorrow night, October the 2nd. 12 years into an extinction level event. Have a great day. <laughs>